Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor and I'm going to be showing you my top five favorite lightsabers in the game. And now this isn't uh, like these aren't unique creations that I was like, ah, oh, if you mash this part with this part and this part and this part, it just looks really cool or oh, this specific color scheme is awesome. No, I picked my five favorite ones by trying to recreate iconic ones from Star Wars because that's my favorite thing to do and stuff like this just because I prefer the way that they look in the movies. And so we're going to try imitating five different ones from the movies and I think I did them pretty well so uh, let's just get down to it and start with number five and so our first one here is going to be Darth Vader's lightsaber so probably one of if not the most iconic lightsabers in the entire franchise obviously it's the one wielded by Darth Vader now there's a long history obviously Anakin Skywalker who is Darth Vader based it heavily upon his original like his Jedi design uh, with some changes that reflected his dark side nature the core of which being the red blade uh, but also it's interesting to note that in the Jedi tradition of crafting a lightsaber, most Padawans will at least somewhat base the style and design on their master, the person that trained them. Anakin never did that. He did not base his off of Obi-Wan's style, which was of course loosely based off of Qui-Gon's. Uh, instead, Anakin based his off of Master Yoda's lightsaber in probably a uh, pretty telling sign of hubris and pride. But all that being said... Uh, I just find it funny that in the end, Darth Vader is still using a lightsaber based on Master Yoda's. So still admitting that instead of basing it off of Sidious when he becomes his Padawan and makes a new lightsaber or becomes his apprentice and makes a new lightsaber, he doesn't base his lightsaber off Sidious. He sticks with his one uh, based off of Yoda's design, which I always find fun. But anyway, uh, if you look at it, you'll find that it actually does look an awful lot like Darth Vader's lightsaber. And so I was very happy with the way that this one turned out. So let's just go through the components and how how to make this one. So for the emitter, I went with the Harmony emitter because it is pretty much exactly what we're looking for. It's got the same basic shape and style of the emitter for him, so that's why we went with it. The vents do not matter because he doesn't use a cross guard lightsaber, and so whatever. Uh, use whatever you want there. If you're going to use a cross guard stance for this one, then I just stuck with the Rebel Hero ones because they match the full out uh, the full saber pretty well, but uh, he doesn't use one, so they're not essential here. Uh, for our vents, though, we are going to go with the Rebel Hero vent, and all of the Rebel Hero parts that you see on here are one of the advantages of having the deluxe edition of the game. If you didn't get it, you can upgrade it. It's available for purchase for, I believe, $20, either on Steam or the PlayStation Store or Microsoft Store, whatever you're playing on. You can purchase it if you so desperately want these parts, uh, but they are pretty much essential to creating this lightsaber and another lightsaber that we'll be doing on this list. So the Rebel Hero is the switch we're using. The grip is also the Rebel Hero grip. And then for the pommel, we went with the assembly pommel because the Rebel Hero grip does not match Darth Vader's rather, uh, very well, but the assembly one is pretty dang close. So those are the pieces that you need. So like I said, Harmony Emitter, Rebel Hero Switch, Rebel Hero Grips, and the assembly pommel. So that is how you make Darth Vader's lightsaber uh, piece-wise or component-wise. For the materials on this one, uh, your primary color needs to be some sort of a shiny silver color because that's what his is. There's a lot of different options. My favorite one to use is under the uh, light metals category and it's just the silver alloy and I have the polish set all the way to the top because I really like the way it looks. You could use imperial chrome, you could use a lot of things, but I think silver alloy just pops the best and looks the best. For secondary, we're going to go under imperial and we'll go with plastoid black and we don't want it to be too shiny. In fact, I might have it a little shinier than you might want it. I set it down to 50 for the polish, but uh, I think it looks pretty dang good, and the plastoid black has a nice uniform black look. For the accent color, we're going to be going with the imperial chrome, and we're going to keep the polish all the way at the top. It looks slightly different than the silver alloy, which is why I chose it. For the grip, we're once again going to be using imperial plastoid black, and again, we're going to set the polish down to 50 because we want to kind of match it. And for the condition, really, you could do whatever you want. I find that I it's hard to believe that Darth Vader would not take care of his lightsaber, given how much he uses it. So I leave it at pristine because, I, A, I think he would take care of it, and B, I like the way it looks but well kept doesn't look much worse and has a little bit more uh body to it uh, i just think anything lower than that starts to look pretty bad so like i said i keep it in pristine but well kept would be good as well uh and then of course for the blade there's only one obvious choice and that is the red blade which you actually need to have completed the game and moved on to new game plus to have access to uh if you don't have red and you want to come close orange is probably your next best bet uh, but red is the way that you want to go if you want to 
emulate Darth Vader. So that is the first saber, Darth Vader's. Let's move on to number four. All right, for our number four spot, we have Luke Skywalker's master lightsaber. So the one that he creates and uh, you see him using in Return of the Jedi. So this one is one of my all-time favorites from the show, so I definitely wanted to redo it. It's not super easy to imitate in the game just because there's a couple design elements that are not replicatable based on the parts that we have, but I think this comes pretty dang close, and if you pair it with a green blade, obviously it's going to be a dead giveaway who you're trying to imitate. As far as the components for this one goes, they're all pretty straightforward. For the emitter, you need the Eno Cordova one. It's essential. No other component will work for this because this one is exactly the same style as Obi-Wan Kenobi's Master Lightsaber as well as Luke Skywalker's Master Lightsaber. For the Switch, we're going to stick with Jaro Topal's because it's pretty basic and comes closer than any of the other Switches I could uh, that I tried uh, to looking like Luke's. For our grip, it's sort of the same thing. There wasn't any that were perfect, but the Hermit grip comes relatively close. It's got a similar-ish style uh, to the one that Luke's uh, Master Lightsaber has. And then for our pommel, that's where we run into the biggest issue because ugh, there just weren't any ones that really nailed it down. That being said, I think the Seer Junda one comes the closest. Obviously, the extra extension on the bottom and the loop aren't perfect, but it does have the little, uh, I, I don't know how you call that, little fluted, striped uh, pattern to it with the raised metal around it that is closer to what Luke's looks like when he builds it. For our blade, of course, we're going with the classic green look, which really makes the entire saber for me. I absolutely love that. And for the materials, we keep it pretty simple. Your primary should be some sort of chrome. Really doesn't matter what it is, but you want it to be a shiny silver. So for that, I go with light metal and I stick with the metal alloy because I just like the way it looks. For secondary, we're going to want to go with something a little bit darker. You could use kind of copper or anything like that, but I think bronzium works. I think it, it looks closest to the way that the movie color is, or at least what I could tell from pictures and everything while trying to do it. So I like the bronzium look, plus it gives it a nice little accent. So that's what you want for the secondary color. For the accent color, we're going to be in light metal again. This time we're going to use dunium. So you again want it to be a sort of chrome-ish look, but I think going with the slightly darker dunium looks good on uh, this lightsaber. For the grip, you want it to be black something. I went with the standard hard plastoid black for the grip, and then I turned the polish down. Ideally, you want it to be darker than this, and so you could go with the imperial plastoid black, which is significantly darker. I just didn't want anything in Luke's lightsaber to be imperial, so that's why I was stubborn, and I stuck with the standard hard plastoid black. So, that's what I went with. Then for the condition, I would go with pristine. Uh, Luke is a concentrated uh, Jedi master. He's not going to let his weapon get damaged or even dirty. He's probably going to spend time meditating while cleaning it and maintaining it and also it is brand new at the time of return of the jedi he literally just made it he was on tatooine before rescuing han that's when he made it and and i believe in canon i think he made it with the reason it's green he made it with the kyber crystal from qui-gon jinn's lightsaber which obi-wan had kept and so i believe that's how he made it and so he made it with spare parts from obi-wan's lightsaber parts and uh, qui-gon's lightsaber parts and he used qui-gon's uh, kyber crystal because it was the only one that he had access to so i think that's actually still canon for that's how how and why luke's master's lightsaber is green but yeah that is how you make it and what it looks like i think it turned out pretty dang good like i said it's not exactly perfect but you can definitely tell it's supposed to be luke's lightsaber so that's number four let's move on to number three all right coming in at the number three spot we have actually two sabers for the price of one so again this one is going to require the deluxe edition because you need all the rebel hero parts but i can show you how to use how to make anakin's lightsaber from Revenge of the Sith and Luke's lightsaber from uh, A New Hope, or I guess the lightsaber that Rey sort of uses in the newer movies, but we're just going to ignore that anyway. So component-wise, uh, we're just going to go right down the list. It's all Rebel, Rebel Hero stuff. So for the emitter, you want Rebel Hero, Switch Rebel Hero, Grip Rebel Hero, and Pommel Rebel Hero. So all right down the line, all of those components. The materials that you want for this one, A, you want your primary and secondary colors to be some sort of like silver or chrome. I chose to just stick with the chrome because I actually like the way it looks the best. And so we're going to be using Imperial Chrome at full polish for the primary and secondary colors. See, same color. And then for our accent, uh, Anakin's slash Luke's appears to have some sort of electrum plating, and so that's what we went with. Out of the, uh, the starter medals, we went in that category and just went straight up with the electrum plated. So that is our accent color. Our grip needs to be black because that's what color it is. I went with the Imperial black uh, Plastoid Black just because it's probably the best one for a nice uniform uh, non-metallic black look that you can go with, and I 
brought the polish down to 75 so it was still dark enough but uh didn't look you know super shiny and then for our condition we want it to be pristine because anakin's lightsaber at the time of revenge of the sith was certainly in extremely good shape as he cleaned and maintained it regularly Finally, for our blade color, we want it to be blue, the very first color that you uh, start with in the game and uh, the first one on the list here. The standard blue is the exact color of Anakin's lightsaber at Revenge of the Sith. And so, now there's only two changes you have to make if you want to go from Anakin's lightsaber to Luke's lightsaber from A New Hope. And the first one is changing the blade color. So we're going to want to go from blue to cyan because for some reason, I assume it just had to do with the visual style at the time, the blue that they used in A New Hope was actually considerably lighter than the one they used in the prequels and so cyan is actually much closer to what luke's lightsaber looks like in a new hope so that's the color we want and then back in the material section we just make one small change and that's to move it to well kept so it gives it a little bit more wear and tear but it still looks like it's in very good shape because even though obi-wan would have obviously kept it safe and maintained it if necessary it wasn't being used and so therefore it would not look as perfect as it did at the time of revenge of the sith so that is how you do either luke's skywalk uh luke's light lightsaber from A New Hope, or Anakin's lightsaber from Revenge of the Sith. So that's number three. Let's move on to number two. All right, coming in at number two on this list, we have Obi-Wan Kenobi's lightsaber, and this is both the style of his apprentice lightsaber from The Phantom Menace, and then after he loses that one when it's kicked down the seemingly endless shaft in Naboo, he actually recreates it pretty dang faithfully, and you see him use it in Attack of the Clones until he loses it uh, when I believe it's taken from him by Count Dooku. It's good work. Uh, for components, we're going to go right down the line it's going to be all the hermit stuff so you have the hermit emitter uh vents don't matter because we don't want to use this one in cross guard the switch we're going to do hermit the grip is going to be hermit and the pommel is going to be hermit so all the hermit parts which makes sense considering they're all obi-wan kenobi's lightsaber parts for our materials to get it looking like it did in uh phantom menace and attack of the clones we're going to stick with the light metal section for our primary color and in there we're going to do stainless durasteel with the polish all the way at 100 for the secondary we're going to be imperial and we're going to have that set to plastoid black and we're going to have the polish on that set down to 50 for the accent we're going to be in the light metal section again and we're going to have metal alloy this time and we'll keep the polish at 100 for the grip we're going to once again be an imperial and it's going to once again be plastoid black with the polish set down to 50 and for the condition it's going to be pristine because this is obi-wan kenobi we're talking about he is obviously going to keep his lightsaber in tip-top condition because he is a dedicated jedi knight so that is how you get it to look exactly like his and lastly for the color we of course have blue because this is the prequel era colors and he had the very uh prequel style blue that was the color of his blade so that is exactly how you make obi-wan kenobi's lightsaber in star wars jedi survivor and finally, at the number one spot, we have go of course have a lot of people's favorite lightsaber, uh, that being Mace Windu. And now this one is not uh, perfect, but it does look a lot like it. So if you're familiar with his lightsaber or you look up a picture, you'll see that this is not far off. It's actually pretty dang close and does a really good job of imitating what his lightsaber looks like. All right, and so for these components, you need the Santari Kree emitter. For the switch, we also want it to be Santari Kree. The grip, we want it to be the Rebel Hero. If you do not have the Rebel Hero, in my opinion, the next best one is the Eno Cordova grip. But uh, if you do have the Rebel Hero, then I find that one to be the best because it looks the most like his from the movie and then for our pommel we're once again going to have the santari kree uh quite a few of them would work for the pommel these three right here all actually work relatively well i just think the santari kree one works the best for our materials on this one it's going to be all pretty simple and straightforward our primary and secondary colors are both going to be in the light metal section and we're going to want to use silver alloy because it's got the correct hue and shine to it and we're going to want to keep that at 100 for the polish our accent is going to be in the starter metal section and that's going to be electrum plated so uh, quite fancy, but that is uh, the accent that Mace Windu's lightsaber has, so that's why we use it for that. Our grip is going to be in the Imperial section, because we're going to be using the Plastoid Black, and we're going to have that polish set down to 50, uh, but really any black material would work. I just think this one works the best. And for our condition, we want to keep it at pristine. Now, you could set it to whatever you want. Maybe you're role-playing that Cal Kestis found it on Coruscant, because that's presumably where it went when uh, Mace Windu got thrown out the window. So maybe you want to say it's not in that good of shape. And I think that this lightsaber still looks decently good in any of the settings. But I like it in pristine best because that's how Mace Windu would have kept it. And then of course, lastly, for that iconic Mace Windu lightsaber look, we need our purple blade. Uh, very few light... Uh, 
users of the Purple Blade in Star Wars canon, so if we're going to be imitating Mace Windu, that's one of the easiest and uh, most accurate ways to do so. So that is how you make Mace Windu's lightsaber, and that is all five of my favorite uh, lightsaber hilts that I've currently got figured out for how to make in the game. Like I said, there's lots of different cool designs you could come up with, and many of them are going to be very fancy looking, but I like imitating the ones from the movies. So that is the ones that I have found good ways to do so far in the game. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.